now hi friends today i am going to explain about ledger kiran and sons is a firm and they want to maintain accounts then what is the first step if there is any financial business transaction in the firm then they should record that so first step is they should record the transaction in the books in which book they record small firms record the business transactions in journal book and large scale organizations they record in subsidiary books assume that kiran and sons this firm is maintaining journal book now here there is one example in 2018 year in the month of january between the firm and the madhu there were some transactions who is madhu madhu is our customer on 1st january firm sold goods to madhu then entry is madhu account debit to sales account in journal lesson i explained all these entries then next what happened on third we sold goods to madhu on cash then cash account debit to sales account if you see the first entry firm sold goods to madhu on credit therefore madhu is liable to us madhu is liable for 1000 rupees madhu has to pay 1000 rupees to us in second transaction on third date firm has given goods to madhu and immediately madhu paid cash to us so madhu is not liable to us here then on fourth date again we sold goods to madhu on credit then now the amount is 5000 rupees again madhu is becoming liable to us then on seventh date madhu paid some cash cash account debit to madhu madhu account how much cash is paying 4500 rupees then on ninth date madhu issued a check to us then on 11th date madhu to madhu we sold 4000 worth of goods out of which immediately he paid 2000 rupees so 2000 rupee cash is coming and another 2000 rupee is loan then on 13th date madhu returned the 200 worth of goods to us like that assume that in january month between madhu and the firm there are 50 transactions is 50 transactions what happened sometimes madhu is becoming liable to us sometimes we are selling goods to him sometimes we are selling goods to him on credit sometimes we are selling on cash basis then sometimes he is paying money to us sometimes he is returning the goods to us sometimes while paying the money we are allowing discount to him like that so many transactions took place now finally on a particular date for example at the end of the month that is on 31st january 2018 firm wants to know what is the end result of all these 50 transactions now to know this answer let us refer a journal book by looking at journal can you get that answer no journal book is useful to know when what happened so since we cannot remember the transactions we are recording somewhere on date wise that is only the use of journal you cannot know the net effect of any transactions for that we have to maintain a separate book that book is called ledger in journal book what we are doing 
we are recording the transactions after recording the transactions next step is classification of those transactions in which book we classify them in a book known as ledger so remember ledger is a book which is used to classify the recorded information the account looks like this so account is divided into two parts here this is the center line then left part is known as debit side to denote that we have to write dr word similarly right part right part denotes credit write down cr to denote that part then debit side we have date column particulars column jf number jf number stands for journal folio number then amount right side also we have the same columns now all these journal entries one by one we have to record in this account while recording we should follow some rules when you want to know about madhu all madhu related transactions we should record in this account so it is madhu account don't think that only madhu account we may we prepare in ledger book like madhu account here some accounts we open no? on each account name a separate table we open here for example see the first entry madhu account at r2 sales account two accounts are there madhu account even we prepare sales account also in the same manner similarly second entry cash account at r2 sales account so cash account again we open and sales account already it is there then third entry completed madhu account sales account fourth entry cash and madhu fifth entry bank account at r2 madhu account so we open bank account also like that whatever is a account in journal with that head again we open a separate account in ledger so we can say that ledger is a book which contains all accounts you know accounts are of three types personal accounts real accounts nominal accounts all these three accounts are maintained in ledger book then ledger book is known as principal book why since from ledger book we can get all these important information ledger book is known as book of principal since from ledger book we know all this information ledger book is known as principal book and what is other name it is also known as book of final entry if there is any transaction then what we do first we record the transaction in journal or subsidiary books since it is recorded for the first time in this book these books are known as books of primary entry then from there again we record them in ledger since second time we are entering in ledger this is known as book of secondary entry okay then now in today's class we will learn how to prepare one personal account see this example here there are some transactions for the month of january all these transactions are between firm and madhu finally on 31st january 2018 firm wants to know madhu is liable for how much amount then we should post all these transactions in the ledger how let us see first one sold go goods sold to madhu here first 
in journal book we should write journal entry no so you should know some basics regarding journal entry accounts are of three types personal accounts real accounts nominal accounts now what happened here this is firm here madhu is our customer goods sold to madhu firm is selling goods what are going from the firm goods and this is credit transaction we sold goods to madhu on credit because when customer name is given along with the sales transaction or purchase transaction then they come under credit transactions so what happened here goods are going to madhu madhu is going to pay that 18000 rupees in future then two accounts we have to identify first of all to whom we sold goods to madhu so madhu account is one account what are going from us goods then goods account is one account so sold goods to madhu is one transaction this transaction contains two accounts what are they madhu account and goods account now let us see this madhu account comes under personal real or nominal madhu means person name with person name if you open any account that account comes under personal account so madhu account is a personal account then goods goods means asset with asset name if you open any account that account comes under real account then apply personal account and real account double entry principles for, for personal account what is the principle debit the receiver credit the giver here think from firm's point of view so madhu is a receiver he is receiving goods then madhu account should be debited and goods real account real account principle debit what comes in credit what goes out here from the firm goods are going therefore goods are to be credited when goods come in credit instead of goods we have to write sales account then final entry becomes madhu account debtor to sales account two accounts are there our present account is madhu account now this journal entry we should record in that madhu account recording journal entry in respective account by following debit and credit rules is known as posting so what we are going to do in this account we are going to post all the journal entries how to post see our present account name is madhu and if you observe the entry madhu account is debited therefore in that account debit side we should post left side is called debit side no debit side in date column this transaction date we should record transaction date is 1st january 2018 and remember in particulars column you have to commence with to there is no proper meaning for that that is one custom with the two we have to start to what to write other account name we should write what is the other account sales account in jf number what we should do in firm when you are maintaining journal journal is a book no in journal on which page we wrote this entry for example on 101 page we wrote this particular journal entry then that page number we should mention here since you are a student since there are no books with you you need not to write any number in journal folio number column so leave that column 
Then in amount column, write down the transaction amount. Right. Next, cash received from Madhu. Madhu paid cash to us. Now, two accounts we have to identify. What is coming to us? Cash. Cash account is one account. From whom that money is coming? Madhu. Madhu account is another account. Now, cash means asset. All assets come under real account. Then Madhu, person name now? It is a personal account. Now, what is the real account rule? Debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Here cash is coming, therefore debit it. What is the personal account rule? Debit, or the, debit the receiver, credit the giver. Here Madhu is giving cash to us now. Madhu is a giver, therefore credit him. Then final entry becomes cash account debtor to Madhu account. We are preparing Madhu account. Madhu account is coming in credit. Therefore, we said we should post this entry credit side. Credit side in date column, write down the transaction date. With what we should start here? With the buy. Buy what to write? Other account name. Now the other account name is cash. Amount is thousand rupees. Then next one is goods returned by Madhu. Madhu is our customer. Once he purchased goods from her from us, since he is not satisfied with the quality, he returned some goods to us. So from Madhu goods are coming then what are the two accounts here goods account madhu account goods asset comes under real account then madhu account is a personal account what is real account rule debit what comes in credit what goes out here goods are coming now Therefore, goods account is to be debited. Then personal account rule, debit the receiver, credit the giver. Here Madhu is giving goods to us. He is a giver. Therefore, we should credit him. When goods are coming in debit, then instead of goods, what we should write? This is sales return transaction. No. Therefore, write down sales returns. Then what is the final entry? Sales returns account data to Madhu account. Madhu is in credit, therefore credit side we should write. Date is 7th by sales returns account. Amount is 2000 rupees. Over. Then next one. Received check from Madhu. Madhu has to pay money to us. Instead of pay, giving cash, he has given a check to us. Actual procedure is, we should go to Madhu's bank. We should submit the check there and we should take the money. But we cannot go like that. Because we are doing business daily, so many checks come to us. We cannot go to all those banks. Then what we do? We are also maintaining one bank account. Then this Madhu's check we deposit in our bank. Then what happens? Bank becomes the receiver here. Therefore, bank account is one account. And Madhu is giving this check. So Madhu account is another account. Bank account comes under personal account. 
Why? You know. Personal account means what? Any account which is opened with a person name or firm name. Bank means exactly one particular bank name is there, no? Andhra bank account. ICICA bank account. So this is one organization name. Therefore it comes under personal account. And Madhu is also a personal account. What is personal account rule? Debit the receiver, credit the giver. Here who is the receiver? Bank. Therefore debit it. Who is the giver? Madhu. Then credit him. Then what is the final entry? Bank account debtor to Madhu account. We are preparing Madhu account in entry. Madhu account is in credit. Therefore, we should post this entry in credit side by bank account. 10th date and amount is 3000 rupees. Then Next, sold goods to Madhu for cash. Firm sold goods to Madhu. Then what are going from us? Goods. And on the same day, Madhu paid cash to us. Then two accounts are goods account and cash account. Observe here. I am not considering Madhu name here. Why? Remember, in case of cash sale or cash purchases, we need not to consider the customer's name or supplier's name because transaction is completed here. We got, we received cash from Madhu. So we need not to remember Madhu's name now. Then, goods account comes under real account because it is an asset and cash is also an asset. Therefore, real account. Then what is real account rule? Debit what comes in, credit what goes out. See the diagram. What is coming to us? Cash. Debit it. What is going from us? Goods. Credit it. When goods are in credit, instead of goods what to write? Sales. Then what is the final entry? Cash account debtor to sales account. Observe here, Madhu account is not there. Therefore, this entry doesn't come in Madhu account. Where it goes? In cash account, debit side. And in sales account, credit side. So be clear with this point. When general entry contains Madhu account name, then only that entry we should post in Madhu account. Next, Madhu returned goods. Madhu is our customer. Once we sold goods to him, today he is returning some goods to us. What are coming to us? Goods. From whom? Madhu. These two are the accounts. Now, goods. Since it is an asset, it comes under real account. Madhu, person name, no. Personal account. Then real account rule, debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Here goods are coming, therefore we should debit it. And this is sales return transaction, no. Therefore, instead of goods, we should write sales returns word. Then final entry becomes sales returns account at R2. Madhu account. Why Madhu is credited? Personal account rule, you know. Debit the receiver, credit the giver. Madhu is giving goods to us now. Therefore, credit Madhu account. Final entry becomes sales return second data to Madhu account. Madhu is in credit. Therefore, credit side we should record. By what to write? Other account name. That is Sales returns 
account. Amount is thousand rupees. Then next one, returned goods by Madhu. Same transaction, no? Madhu is returning goods to us. This is also sales return transaction. Just now I told the entry, sales returns account at R2, Madhu account. Madhu is in credit, therefore credit side by sales returns account. Date is 14th. Thousand rupees. Clear? Till now what we did? All journal entries we posted in the ledger account. In Madhu account. After posting, what is the next step? Next step is balancing. Okay? What is the procedure of balancing? Observe Two amount columns are there, debit and credit. You have to observe which side total will be more. Yeah, debit side total will be more. Write down the total in rough notes. Debit side total is 18,000 rupees. From this, deduct credit side total. Credit side total is 8,000 rupees. Then the remaining amount is 10,000. This 10,000 rupees known as balance. Which balance this is? Be clear with this point. Which side total is more? That balance account shows. Debit side total is more. Therefore, this 10,000 balance is known as debit balance. Then we said we should record this answer. This side total is less. Credit side total is less. Therefore, record the transaction in credit side. By what to write? Balance carried down. C by D stands for carried down. And what should be the date for this? This is not a transaction. He has not given any date in the question. Then date should be the last date of that particular month. We are preparing Madhu account in for January. In January last date will be 31st. Therefore, 31st January 2018. Then write down this 10,000 rupees answer here. Then two sides put the total. Debit total is 18,000. Since we have written the difference, if you total it, credit side also, how much total comes? 18,000 rupees. Then what is the meaning of this answer? Let us see. Madhu account is a personal account. What is personal account rule? Debit the receiver, credit the giver. Therefore, debit amounts are what? From the firm Madhu received. Madhu received 18,000 rupees from us. Credit the giver. Credit said amounts are what? Madhu has given to us. Madhu has given 8,000 rupees to us. Madhu received 18,000 from us and Madhu has given 8,000 to us. Now the excess amount, 10,000, is what? Madhu took from us. Now that 10,000 rupees, Madhu should pay to us. Means Madhu is becoming liable to us. When a person is liable to the firm, then to the firm, that person is known as debtor. So be clear with this point. By preparing this account, we came to know that on 31st January 2018, Madhu is a debtor. For how much amount? 10,000 rupees. In January month, 
देर वर सम ट्रांजेक्शन बिटवीन फर्म एंड मधु ऑल दीज ट्रांजेक्शन वी रिकॉर्डेड इन वन प्लेस वाई टू नो द नेट इफेक्ट ऑफ ऑल दीज ट्रांजेक्शन वॉट इज द नेट इफेक्ट ऑफ दीज ट्रांजेक्शन मधु इज बिकमिंग लाइबल टू अस He has to pay ten thousand rupees to us. Date of that balance carried down date. That is first February two thousand eighteen. Two. What we should write? We are bringing the demo now. Therefore, write down two balance brought down. How much we are bringing to next month? Ten thousand rupees. So this is the opening balance for February month. Again in February month also we are going to continue Madhu account in the same manner. Now remember one point: balance carried down can also be written as balance carried forward or. Balance carried out. So C by D or C by F or C by O. We can write anything. Similarly, balance brought down or balance forward or balance outward. Anything we can write here. In this manner. we can prepare one personal account yeah now this is your second problem in ledger in march month there are some transactions between firm and swami now firm wants to know on 31st march 2018 whether swami is liable to us or we are liable to swami so to know the net effect of all these transactions in our ledger book we should prepare swami's account how to prepare that account let us see now first one amount due to swami see this is not known as transaction this is called opening balance opening balance means what La previous month closing balance becomes opening balance for current month. Meaning is not only for this March month, previous month that is February month. In February month also there were some transactions between firm and Swami. We recorded them in February month Swami account. From that account, we are bringing the balance to current month Swami's account. Then we said we should bring that. For that, you should remember some points. If a Swami is a debtor, then bring this opening balance in debit side. If Swami is a creditor. then bring this opening balance in credit side then what is mean by debtor and what is mean by creditor you should know see this is firm and x is a supplier from x we bought goods Say ten thousand worth of goods we purchased. We purchased these goods for credit. Then who is liable to whom? Firm is liable to X. Therefore, X is known as creditor. <coughs> Then take another example. Firm sold five thousand worth of goods. To Y on credit. Now who is liable to whom? Who has to pay the money to whom? Y should pay five thousand rupees to firm. 
therefore y is known as delta r so be clear with these two words creditor means who a person to whom firm is liable debtor means who a person to whom a person who is liable to the firm clear now debtor is an asset for us because we should receive money and creditor is a liability because we have to pay there is an obligation now assets show debit balance therefore debtor's account we should debit and liability shows a credit balance therefore if swami is a liar creditor then he is we are liable to him and the demon comes in credit side now observe this sentence amount due to swami what is the meaning of that firm has to pay money to swami firm is liable to swami then who is swami here he is a creditor creditor shows a credit balance no therefore this first amount we should show in credit side <coughs> by what to write balance brought down first march 2018 12000 rupees suppose he has given like this amount due from swami amount due from swami means what swami should pay to us then swami is liable to us then swami becomes a debtor then we said we should write debit side what to write same to balance brought down clear that from eighth onwards he has given transactions for transactions we should think the journal entry then that entry we should post in the account eighth date goods purchased from swami see we we are buying goods and the person name is given supplier's name is given then what is the meaning of that this is credit purchase firm purchased goods from swami then what are coming to us goods since it is credit transaction on that day we are not paying any cash so two accounts we should identify what are coming to us goods from whom from swami two accounts we have now goods is an asset asset comes under real account then swami person name then it is a personal account then what is real account rule debit what comes in credit what goes out goods are coming to us therefore debit it then what is personal account rule debit the receiver credit the giver now swami is giving goods to us no he is a giver therefore credit him then when goods are coming in debit instead of goods what we should write purchases because this is purchase transaction then final entry becomes purchases account debtor to swami account now swami account we are preparing it is in credit side therefore post this entry in credit side date is 8th what to write other account name what is other account here purchases account by 
purchases account. The amount is two thousand rupees. Next, goods returned to Swami. Once we bought goods from Swami, now we are not satisfied with the quality of those goods. Then we return these goods to Swami. What are going from us? Goods. Two accounts we have to identify. One is Swami account because we are giving goods to him. Another account is goods account. Then Swami account comes under personal account, goods, asset no, real account. Then personal account rule, debit the receiver, credit the giver. Here Swami is receiving goods, he is a receiver, therefore debit him. Then real account rule, debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Goods are going, therefore credit it. When goods are in credit, instead of goods what to write? Once you observe which transaction this is. This is return transaction, no? Purchase returns, no? Therefore write down purchase returns account. Then what is the final entry? Swami account debtor to purchase returns account. Swami is in debit. Therefore, debit side we should post. With what we have to start? To. To purchase returns account. Date is 10th. Thousand rupees. Then. Next. Cash paid to Swami. Firm paid cash to Swami. To whom we paid? To Swami. Swami account is one account. What is going from us? Cash. Cash is another account. Then Swami is a personal account. Cash. Asset no? All assets come under real account. Then what is personal account rule? Debit the receiver. Credit the giver. Here Swami is a receiver, therefore debit him. Then what is real a control? Debit what comes in, credit what goes out. Goods are going, no, sorry. Cash is going, therefore credit cash. Then final entry is Swami account debtor to cash account. Swami account debtor to cash account. We are preparing Swami's account. It is in debit. Therefore, we should post this transaction in debit side. To cash account. Date is 15th. 6,000 rupees. Then, goods purchased from Swami for cash. We bought goods from Swami. Goods are coming. On the same day, we paid cash to him. In case of cash, cash purchases, we need not to consider the supplier's name. Because we need not to remember. Already we paid money. Why to remember his name? Then don't consider Swami's name. What are coming to us? Goods. What is going from us? Cash. Both are assets. Both come under real accounts. Real account rule. Debit what comes in. Credit what goes out. Now what is coming to us? Goods. Therefore, debit it. And what is going from us? Cash. Credit it. And this is purchase transaction. Therefore, instead of goods, what we should write? Purchases. Then final entry becomes Purchases account debtor to cash account. What is our present account name? Swami account. 
Swami account is not there here. Therefore, we need not to post this entry in Swami's account. Where it will be posted? In purchase account, debit side. And in cash account, credit side, we should post this. Therefore, while preparing Swami's account, you can yes. Now, next transaction is check issued to Swami, 3000 rupees. Firm should pay money to Swami. Instead of paying in cash form, we issued a check. Then what he does with that check? He goes to our bank. He presents the check into bank. Then bank people give money to Swami. Now two accounts we have to pick up. First of all, to whom we, we have given check? To Swami. Then Swami account is one account. And who is paying money to Swami? Bank. Bank is another account. Now Swami, person name now, it is a personal account and a bank. Bank means actually we write one bank name here. Andhra Bank account, SBI account. All these are firms now. With a firm name when we open any account, that account is known as personal account. Therefore, bank account is also a personal account. Then what is personal account rule? Debit the receiver, credit the giver. Here who is the receiver? Swami is receiving money. So Swami is to be debited. Who is the giver? Banker. Therefore, credit bank account. Final entry becomes Swami account data to bank account. Our present account, Swami account is in debit side. Therefore, post this transaction, this entry in debit side to bank account on 23rd, 3000 rupees. Clear? Now, come to the last one. Swami's account is settled with a 10% discount. What is the meaning of that? If Swami is liable to us, he paid that amount. If we are liable to Swami, we cleared that amount. How? With a 10% discount. So first of all, we should know who is liable to whom. Second point is, how much is that amount? Then third point is, how much is the discount? Let us see all these points one by one. How? Observe, we say total is more. Credit side total is more. First you write on that. Credit side total is 14,000 rupees. Minus debit side 10,000 rupees. Then this 4,000 rupee is known as balancing figure. What is the meaning of this answer? You know, Swami account is a personal account. What is personal account principle? Debit the receiver, credit the giver. According to that, if Swami is a receiver, all those amounts debit said we are showing and Swami, if he is giving something to us, we are recording them in credit side. Now, how much money Swami has given to us? 14,000. How much money he received from us? 10,000. Which amount is more? Given amount is more. So Swami has given 4,000 rupees to us. Finally. Now this amount, firm should return to Swami. We should return that money to Swami. Means who is liable to whom? Firm is liable to Swami. Then who is Swami here? Swami is a creditor. For how much amount? 
फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज फॉर्म शुड पे फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज टू स्वामी एंड वी सेटल्ड हिज अकाउंट मीन्स वी पेड दट अमाउंट हाउ वी पेड विथ टेन परसेंट डिस्काउंट वी पेड सो कैलकुलेट दट डिस्काउंट अमाउंट डिस्काउंट इज इक्वल द ड्यू अमाउंट फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज इंटू टेन परसेंट फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज देन फाइनली हाउ मच मनी वी पे टू स्वामी वी हैव टू पे फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज इन दट ही अलाउड फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज डिस्काउंट टू अस फाइनली वी पेड थ्री थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड रुपीज क्लियर देन वॉट इज द फाइनल ट्रांजेक्शन हियर सी कैश पेड टू स्वामी हाउ मच मनी वी आर पेइंग थ्री थाउजेंड सिक्स हंड्रेड एंड discount received or allowed you should know when we pay cash we receive discount when we receive cash we allow discount so here we are paying cash to swami now therefore we are receiving the discount how much discount we received 400 actually he is supposed to give in this manner but indirectly has given so we should calculate all these things now cash paid to swam let us frame the journal entry for this this is firm here swami is there we paid cash how much cash is going 3600 and there is some discount also discount received 400 rupees Then identify the accounts. To whom we paid money? Swami. Swami account is one account. What is going from us? Cash. Then there is four hundred rupees gained to us. That profit is called discount received. So this in this transaction contains. Three accounts. Remember, every transaction contains minimum two accounts and maximum n number of accounts. Here, three accounts are coming. Then, one by one, we should see. Swami, person name. With person name, if you open any account, that account is known as personal account. Then, cash, asset. All assets come under real account. Then discount received is a profit. Expenses, losses, incomes and gains they come under nominal account. Now apply the double entry principles. Personal account principle is debit the receiver, credit the giver. Here Swami is receiving cash now. He is a receiver. Therefore, we should debit him. Then real account rule: debit what comes in, credit what what goes out. Here cash is going. Therefore, credit it. Then nominal account rule: debit all expenses, losses, credit all incomes and gains. Now discount received. From firm's point of view, if you see, this is gain to us. Therefore. We should credit it. Then what is the final entry? Swami account debtor to cash account to discount received account. How much cash we paid? Three thousand six hundred. Discount is four hundred. Now Swami, write down the total four thousand rupees. See, this is little bit peculiar entry, no? 
Till now, in any entry, only two accounts we are getting. But first time, one entry contains more than two accounts. This type of entries are known as compound entries. Remember, if any entry contains more than two accounts, that entry is called compound entry. Now, how to post this entry here? Same posting rules. We are preparing Swami's account. Swami account is in debit side. Therefore, debit side we should post. Date is 31st. Right. 31st. Then, 2. What to write? Credit side names. Credit said we have cash account and this is March month, no? Okay. We will make it clear. Credit said we have two cash account, discount received account. Write down both. On the same day, two discount received account. The amounts are cash 3600, discount 400. Now, two side totals will be 14,000 and 14,000. See here, there is no balance carried up. Why? Because at the end of the month, Swami account was settled. Means we paid that due amount to him. That is why there is no balance carried down. Therefore, you need not to write balance brought down also. Sometimes what happens, Swami becomes a debtor. In our problem, Swami is a creditor at the end. Therefore, David said we wrote cash and discount received. Sometimes what happens, debit total will be more than the credit total. Then we said answer comes, these two comes in credit side. Because Swami becomes a data. Means Swami is liable to us. Then he pays that amount with some discount as you. Then credit said we should write by cash, by discount, not received, we should write allowed. So remember, if Swami becomes a creditor, we should write in debit side, to cash, to discount received. If Swami becomes a debtor at the end, credit side we should write, and we should write by cash and by discount allowed. Sometimes what happens, we may settle this account not with cash by issuing a check or by receiving a check. In the transaction, if that check word is given, Swami's account is settled with a check, then instead of writing cash, what we should write? Bank account. Clear? Now, next topic is forms of ledger accounts. As a student, you are going to learn about this method. What is the format here? Account is divided into two sides, debit side and credit side. This method is known as standard form. But generally in organizations, they follow self-balancing form. What is the, observe the difference between these two. Swami account we are preparing and under second method, we have date, reference, general folio number, debit, credit, balance. Now, after preparing this account, I will explain the difference between these two. First transaction is what? Balance due to Swami means firm has to 
pay money to Swami. Means Swami is a creditor. Creditor shows a credit balance. How much is the amount? 12,000 rupees. This is called opening balance, no? Therefore, balance brought down. When? On 1st March 2018. Next, what happened? Then, 8th date. On 8th date, we purchased goods from Swami. Then, on 8th date, purchases. Then we said we should write the amount, debit or credit. You should know the journal entry. Purchase account debtor to Swami account. Swami is in credit now. Therefore, we should write this amount in credit side. Then, I will, we already we are liable to Swami for 12,000 rupees. Now more 2,000 we purchased from Swami. Then we are liable to Swami for 14,000 rupees. How this 14,000 rupees came? 12,000 opening balance plus again we have 2,000 rupees credit balance. Add both. Then after 8th, next what happened? On 10th date, purchase returns. Goods returned to Swami. What is the entry? Swami account data to purchase returns. Swami is in debit. Therefore, debit side purchase returns. Date is 10th. Now, we said we should write the amount. Swami is in debit. Therefore, in debit column, we should write 1000 rupees. Then what is the effect on balance? Till 8th date, we are liable to Swami for 14,000 rupees. But on 10th date, since we returned 1000 goods to him, now the liability will come down. Now the liability is how much? 13,000 rupees. We have to pay to him. Then, next what happened? On 15th date, cash paid to Swami. That is the transaction, no? Then Swami account data to cash account. Swami is in debit. Therefore, we should write cash. Date is 15th. Now, debit side or credit side? Swami is in debit now. Then write down the amount in debit side. And we paid 6,000. Now more how much we should pay? 13,000 minus 6,000. 13 minus 6, 7,000 rupee. Now we are liable to Swami for 7,000 rupees. In this manner, we should prepare the account. Now, observe one point here. In ordinary method, when you will come to know about the net result of this account, only at the end of the month. On 8th, you cannot tell for how much money we should pay to Swami. On 15th, you cannot tell that. But the advantage of this method is, so when any transaction takes place, what is the effect of that transaction on liability? Immediately we will come to know about that. So on any particular day, we can tell the net effect of all these Madhu related transactions. Nowadays, all firms are following self-balancing form of ledger. But as a student, you should learn standard form. In examination, problems come based on standard form only. Okay? Next topic is types of ledger. If you take small firm, 
since number of transactions are few number of accounts are also less so one ledger book is enough to prepare all accounts but take large scale organizations assume that in one organization there are 500 accounts if you record 500 accounts only in one ledger book then that ledger book becomes bulky and a single person has to handle this many accounts which is a cumbersome process and it may leads to so many mistakes and locating a particular account becomes difficult then what they do they divide ledger into seven parts and in assets ledger in this book they maintain all asset related accounts like missionary account building account furniture account patents account trademarks account land account goodwill account all these are what assets so all asset related information you can get from one particular book similarly in liabilities ledger they maintain all liabilities related accounts like loan account bank overdraft account etc then revenue ledger here they maintain all incomes related accounts like commission received account interest received account discount received account etc they maintain here the next one expenses account they maintain all expenses losses related accounts in this book like salary account postage account all expenses related information we can have in this book then debtors ledger here we maintain all debtors related accounts who is a debtor a person who is liable to the firm is known as a debtor suppose madhu is one debtor to us kiran is one debtor to us all these accounts madhu account kiran account somesh account all these accounts one by one we prepare in debtors ledger similarly in creditors ledger we prepare all creditors accounts for example giri we are liable to giri then giri is a creditor giri account we prepare here we are liable to rama rama account we prepare here then last one is general ledger the accounts which we cannot prepare in above 6 are prepared in ledger general ledger book for example landlord account outstanding salary account prepaid insurance account commission to be received account all these are little bit peculiar accounts we cannot group them under this first six books then we maintain a separate book to record all this type of accounts so with this your ledger topic is completed hope this is clear to you thank you